take a quick look at histogram. Some of the some of uh, what we need to know about those. Uh, the idea behind a histogram it's going to allow you to group nearby values, and then what it's going to do is display frequencies. So, for example, you know, here's some data on SAT scores. We can start to see, you know, how much, uh, you know, how many students scored between 1450 and 1500 on the SATs, right? Which would be represented by that particular bar. So that's 14 students. Uh, we can see how many students scored above 1750. So we take these two bars together, so we have five in this bar, one here, so there's six that scored above a 1750. One thing that the histogram is not going to allow us to do, if I asked you how many students scored uh, a 1520, um, that's something that the histogram doesn't allow you to actually see. We can see that somebody, or there's this group of eight students all of a sudden uh, that scored somewhere between 1500 and 1550, right, in this particular uh, been, but we don't know what the exact scores are. So there's one of the limitations to a histogram. So moving forward, in terms of constructing a histogram, what we want to make sure is we want to make sure that uh, the data is spread out enough where we can really start to see some patterns. So what we're going to do is make sure that we construct equal sections. Right? I want to highlight that for you. Um, minimum of five bins, and really what that's going to allow us to do is going to spread the data out enough where we can really see what's happening. Uh, we can start to get an idea of some of those shapes and the outliers that might be present. We can start to talk about the center and the spread a little bit easier. Um, but one of the best ways to do that is we get a really good look at um, what the shape is. We want to make sure that we have equal uh, size bins. Right? Uh, from there, a frequency table can just help us organize the data in terms of how many pieces of data fall into each bin and then we'll draw a graph. So let's say that we took uh, these 2008 SAT scores from Wake County. Uh, they're not in any particular order. So what we see here is we've got scores ranging from what looks like the lowest score is about 1304. So that looks like the lowest score all the way up to uh, something in the 1700s. I believe that's the highest score. So if we think about this, uh, a bin size here, we don't necessarily have to do you know, 1304 minus 1766 find that range and divide by five. Uh, a really obvious uh, and easy to work with bin size here would be, what if we just went by hundreds? I mean, what if we found everything that was from 1300 to 1399, 1400 to 1499, and so on. Uh, so sometimes the bin size, you could do it a very calculated way, where we divide by five and then do it that way. But here, uh, common sense kind of plays a big role. And then, hey, SATs kind of break down pretty easily in terms of by hundreds, especially here, because again, what we end up with is we end up with a little bit of data in each bin. So that's perfect. We wanted at least five bins, and that's what we got. So from there, what we'll do is you got a frequency uh, going up the y axis, right? We want to make sure that we, uh, you could also put count there if you'd like. And then we've labeled the other axis, right? We got the other one labeled as score. There's the other label. Oh, excuse me. Uh, so both axes are labeled. You can see it there. And there's a title, Lake County SAT scores. And then we just kind of, at this point, we can start to make some determinations about this. It looks like we might be a little bit bimodal. There's a slight skewness uh, to this thing. It's definitely not symmetric. Um, and it's, it'd be kind of hard at this point, the way that it's breaking down, to maybe go into too much detail. Um, but one thing I do want to point out, as you can see right here in the middle of all of these bins, they're putting the value that's in the middle of the bin, right? So this particular box is everything from 1300 to 1399. But if you notice, the tick mark's in the middle of the box, and so they put the value that was right in the middle of 13 and 1400, 1350. That's one particular way to set up your histogram. Uh, another way we might do it, if you'll allow me to just kind of uh, scratch through the values that are here. Let's pretend like these aren't here. What we could also do to set up our histogram, we could also go ahead and uh, we could write the value at the beginning of each bin. So right, this was 1300, this was 1400, this was 1500, and then this one started at 16. You'll have to excuse me. 1700. Uh, and that's another way to do it. So if you want to 
put the number at the beginning of the bin, you put it at the beginning of the bar. If you want to put the number in the middle of the bin, you put it in the middle of the bar. It's kind of common sense stuff, but we'll go ahead and point it out now just so we're all on the same page.